Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today's project is another simple one. We're going to make a drink bottle holder. So this is going to be an insulated holder. It's just made out of quilting cotton on the outside and the inside with an insulated lining on the inside. I'm using Insul Bright. If you don't have access to that, then you can actually chop up one of those supermarket shopping bags that have got the insulation on the inside. If you don't want to use it as an insulated bottle holder, then just use some pallen or just a nice soft wadding on the inside. Come along and I'll show you how to make this. Here's what we need. A plate. We need something with a rounded edge to mark our curve. So we'll need a plate of any size. I've got a length of webbing here, which is 61 inches long by one inch wide. I'm going to use this as my crossbody or over the shoulder strap. I have a one inch D ring. I have a one inch lobster clasp or swivel clip and a number five zip slider. And I'm also going to be using a number five continuous zip. And I have a piece of fabric, three and a half inches by five inches. That's going to be for the tab. With our zip, we're actually only going to be using one side. So this is a great project to make two of instead of just doing the one so that you don't waste the other side. You can always find another project to use it on. I'm not making my shoulder strap adjustable today, but if you do want it adjustable, then get yourself a slider as well. And then you can make it an adjustable crossbody strap. We have a piece of fabric for the lining, which is 13 inches by 11 inches. This is Insul Bright and that is also 13 inches by 11 inches and a piece of fabric for the outside, which is 13 by 11 inches. Because I'm using Insul Bright and it wasn't fusible, I've gone and quilted that together. Uh, so I've got the Insul Bright on one side and my fabric on the other, and then I've just trimmed it down to 13 by 11 inches. The pattern that I've done for quilting, you can do whatever you like, really. What I've done is across straight across the center, and then I've done a V in one inch increments going out from that centered cross. So you can do whatever you like with quilting. So with our fabric, we now need to find the center and make a curve. So let's take our lining piece because that's a little bit easier to fold. Fold that in half. So I've got my fold along the bottom here, and I want to mark a curve from here out to the side. Take your plate or something that's round and then we can mark a curve on the open side. So what we have here is 13 inches across and the 11 inches was what was folded. Take your main fabric and you can fold that in half as well. Place the lining over the top and secure it all together with pins or clips. I'm going to use some clips because it's easier to get them through the bulk of the fabric. And all we want to do here is cut this curve out. Now that we have a curve, we can go and measure how long we need our zip to be. So there's the shape of our bottle holder. And I'm just going to take a tape measure, measure from the bottom all the way up around the curve to the top. And that's about 16 and a half inches. I'm going to add another inch and a half to that. So that's 18 inches. So what I've done is added extra because I want a little bit of an overhang at the bottom. So for me, this is 18 inches. Whatever you get here, add an extra inch and a half and then double it. So I've got 18 inches, double that is 36. So for my curve and straight line, I need 36 inches going from here all the way around. And you can double check that by measuring it with your tape measure in one go instead. So that's 33 inches. I'm actually going to cut my zip at 36 inches. That will give me extra to overhang at the edge. Now that I have my 36 inch zip, take it apart and we'll put one aside and we're just going to use this. Take your tab and we're going to fold that in half and then fold that in half again. So we're going to bring the raw edges in and then fold that in half again. And this will enclose everything for our tab. At the moment, all you want to do is set a crease so that it's easier to fold everything together when you've got your D-ring on. So once you've got your crease set for your folds to put everything back together, grab your 
swivel clasp and feed that on like that and then take the raw edges at the short end and line them up and pin it together and then we can sew that together. So just along the very short edge, just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to quickly go and do that now and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's been sewn with a quarter of an inch seam allowance across the top of the short edge there. Then we can just get inside that tube and finger press these seams open and you can just run your fingernail if you have them along the seam there and that'll set that in place. Then we can fold this back up along those fold lines that we created earlier. So it's a little bit fiddly but if you hold your tongue the right way you'll get there. And this is certainly a lot easier on a longer piece of fabric because the, slight, the swivel's not in the way. And you can use this technique as well to make a long crossbody strap and not have any of your seams showing. So just move the slide out of the way, make sure everything else there is lined up. And when you're happy with that, then we can fold it back in half again. And there we have our tab. If you slide the seam closer to the top, then when we sew this onto the bag, this side will become the inside and we will actually stitch down both the edges there. That will be sewn down and nobody will ever know that there's a seam there and you've got the least amount of bulk in your fabric. So that's how our swivel is going to look. And you don't even have to go and stitch the edges because we're going to do that when we secure that to our bottle holder. With our main fabric folded in half and find the center, I'm going to place my tab three inches from the top. Make a mark here with that seam hidden away at the bottom. Line up your tab at the three and a half inch mark there. Pin that in place and we can take this to the machine and stitch that down. I'm going to sew as close to the edge of the swivel that I can get. So I'll go forward, back and forward. And turn around and come straight down. turn around and we'll go forward back and forward again and that's nice and secure okay we have our main fabric and our lining and we're going to place the zip with the teeth faced down on top of our main fabric so I've got the straight edge of the zipper tape on the outside edge of the fabric and you can pin or clip this in place all the way around or if you want to, you can actually tape it. It makes it a little bit easier to sew when you don't have so many pins and clips in the way. I've had some people message me that they have trouble getting their tape off. The best thing to do is when you get to the end of your tape, run your nail just down on the very edge of the tape and that will force the adhesive to stick to your fabric and it will actually help separate the tape from your adhesive a lot easier. So just run your fingernail down on the edge. Okay, and we can place our zip face down right along the straight edge. And just make sure that's well secured. With the tape on the lining, we can now take our main fabric and make sure your swivel is out of the way here and place this right side down and we're going to line up the bottom edges and we're going to line up the two straight edges and just secure that in place. And once you've done the side edges then you can do the top edge and again make sure that swivel is well out of the way. If you want to you can get a pin and just secure that so that it doesn't get in the way of your zipper sewing. Okay, once you've secured both layers of fabric with a zip sandwiched in between, we can take this to the machine, put your zipper foot on and sew really close to the teeth and stitch all the way around here. If you feel more comfortable, you can just go and secure the curves a little bit. That way, whilst you're sewing along, it won't move out of the way. It's really not necessary. So go and put your zipper foot on. We'll take this to the machine and sew the zip in place. Now 
when you come to the curve just sew slowly and just make sure that any ripples are pushed down and toward the inside We do need to clip our curves to help everything relax and sit properly. Before I do that, I do want to just go inside and make sure that everything looks okay. I don't want any puckers or pleats. And if you're happy that that looks okay, which I am, then I'll turn this back the wrong way around. And we're going to clip the curves. And clipping the curves will help the edges of this bottle holder sit a lot better. So you just want to clip close to the edge but not through the stitching line. And it only needs to be done on the curve, not on the straight. Now we can turn this the right way around. Pull out on the zip and that will help separate the lining. We're going to take this back to the machine and we're going to do a top stitch along the entire edge here, making sure that the swivel's out of the way. Keep going around and top stitch until you get to the end. Leave the bottom open. Pull at the zip a little bit. That will help force the lining to sit away from the edge of the zip. Put your regular foot back on. I find it easier to do my top stitching with that. And then just sew all the way around. Okay, we need to put our zip slide on now. I'm just going to line up the fabric and trim off the excess zipper tape. This time I'm going to have my zip slider faced down. I've got the curve facing toward me, but the zipper pull and slider facing down. Pop that on over the top, bring the other edge up. Hold your tongue the right way and give that a push. And then just bring that together. So carefully turn that the right way around just so that you can see how it looks because we all want to see our finished product before it's actually finished. So there's how our bottle holder is going to look. And of course we want to make sure our zip is open at least part of the way. I am notorious for forgetting this part. Okay I've turned this inside out so that we've got the main inside out and the lining as well and we've got both the main and the lining fabric separated from each other and I've got the zipper open most of the way as well so that we can actually get in and turn it all the right way around. Because this is actually only a very small opening at the bottom you can cheat and leave everything the right, right way around and put a binding on the bottom, then box it and put bindings again. I don't like to have bindings on the bottom. I like my lined products nice and neat. So what I'm going to do here, because there isn't enough room to be able to turn the whole bag through the right way, is we're going to create a false seam. So if you take your lining fabric, find the center and just mark a crease along here. And I've done this in a few bags before. It's just a cheats way of having a seam and an opening. So we've folded the crease there. I'm just going to go and quickly make a half inch stitching line. And I'm going to start about here and come up about six inches or so. I'll quickly go and do that and then I'll show you how it looks. Here's what I've done. The fabric has been folded in half. I've started here with the back stitch. I've come forward. And about an inch further on, I've done a couple of back stitches, then sewn all the way forward, back stitched here, come forward another inch or so, and finished off with a back stitch. The reason I've done a back stitch here and here is because this is where I'm going to cut my threads, and I'm also going to slash this open along here. I like to take the point of my seam ripper and I'll just bring that in on the very edge between the layers and then open that fabric up. And then I'll undo the stitches in between here. So 
So there's our little opening just on the side there and that won't be noticed by anybody and that's just a nice cheats way of doing it and still having a nice sealed end at the bottom without having to create bindings. And you can see I've left the bottom edge here open and that just means that I'm not reducing the size of the fabric compared to the other side. Take the center, place it over your zip, line up the fabric, clip the lining onto the main and then we'll take our main and we'll mark the center. So I've marked the center with a pin there, line that up with the center of the zip. We can clip those layers together, clip the main fabric Take the pin out and go back to the other side and with the lining fabric center that and clip that together as well. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew from the outside up to the edge of the zipper tape but not through the tape. Come back to the other side and we'll sew this section as well. Then we'll do this and the, the other side of the lining as well. Once we've done that then we can go and secure all the layers together in the middle there. Then we've got to go and box our corners. Okay I'm going to do the main first. Back stitch. So all the way along until you get to the zipper tape. Back stitch and I will go and do this twice. Repeat for the other side. That's the main bag done and we've left this open at the moment. We'll go and repeat that for the lining now. Now that we've done the lining and the main, place all the layers together. So we've got the lining spread out at the back there the main spread out at the front and then we're going to sew from here to here. We're going to close up this section where the zip is and we want to still have this flapping about on the other side. We can trim off the excess zipper tape and neaten up the bottom edge if you like. And now we need to box our corners. We're only going to have a very small boxed corner on this. From this stitching line here, we're going to come up three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. And from the folded edge, we're going to come out the same. So three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. And we've got a small boxed corner there. We'll do the same on this side. Then we can cut through all of the layers and cut out all the boxing at once. Now what we need to do is pinch the edges open on all of the corners. Okay, nearly finished. All we have to do here is close up these corners here and then we can turn the bag the right way around. So it is a little bit fiddly, but it gives a much neater finish than putting bindings. Okay, we've finished our boxed corners here. Let's go back to this false opening that we've made here and hopefully you've remembered to leave your zip open and we can turn the whole bag the right way around. Push out the corners and if you're happy with how everything looks you can close up this opening here and you can see all it is is like a dart in the fabric. Take the fabric here, and pinch the edges together so this little opening from here to here, you can either whip stitch it closed by hand or just take it to the machine and 
sew that really close to the very edge and then that's all nice and secure. Once you've closed up that false seam here, we're ready to use it. So you can grab any of your drink bottles. This is a long narrow one. Pop your bottle inside, close it up. Then you can carry it around as you wish. It will also fit a bottle with a little bit of a larger diameter and that one will fit in there as well. And there you go. At this point here, you can attach this just to the belt keepers on your jeans if you are wearing them and it can just hang right on your waist. What you can also do is grab your strap, attach the D-ring, bring the edges of your fabric together and sew straight down just on the edge here. We're not making this adjustable, we're just going to make that so that we can actually attach the D-ring to the bag. So I'm going to quickly take this to the machine, sew straight across here. So the strap has been sewn across the short edge and I've allowed about an inch in from the edge. We can open the edges out. I've sewn the edges down with a box going across, down, across and up again. And now I'm going to bring my D-ring up. I'm going to fold this not on the join, but I'm going to fold this just where the edge of one side of the uh, webbing is. Bring my D-ring down. So at the moment I've got the seams hidden underneath with the seam joined here. And then I'm going to take this back to the machine and sew another rectangle around here. And that will secure the D-ring in place, hide the edges and the seam, and it'll be completely hidden and neat. Our D-ring is now secured in place. It's never going to go anywhere. The seams won't come apart. It's very secure. And we can attach this to our bottle holder like that. And then you can just wear it over your shoulder or across your body. If you want to make this an adjustable strap, then you'll need to have a slider and attach the slider like you normally would. So there we go, the finished product, a really quick little insulated drink bottle holder, easily stores your drink bottle and easy to access as well. This is a 750ml pump bottle so it'll easily hold that as well as a narrower bottle and that's a little bit taller. If you wanted to make this as a wine bottle cooler, say you were going on a picnic, you would want to cut your fabric a little bit wider so this wine bottle doesn't quite fit in there. Cut your fabric two inches wider and three inches longer and then that will accommodate your wine bottle. So another quick little project. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's not something I'm going to put in the shop to sell. The only reason for that is that I don't want to go to the trouble of quilting my fabric and the insulation on the inside. Though if I did just decide to use the insulation that came out of the shopping bags, I could use that instead. So I could use that as my liner as well as the insulator and then have fabric on the outside. So that's one way you could go and do it and make it as a sew to sell product without having to spend any time quilting. Might be something worth a try later on down the track. I might actually give this a go in the shop and see how it goes. I reckon it'll do well. For now, this is all it's going to be. I'll use this. The strap, a little bit long. I'll actually change this to an adjustable strap. Otherwise, I'll just attach it to the keepers on the um, side of my pants. Or you can attach a little wristlet strap and attach it to a pram or another bag, whatever you like. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.